All right, happy Monday. Coming up on today's San Francisco 49ers report after Jake Moody's misses yesterday in that regular season finale against the Los Angeles Rams. Going into the playoffs, do the San Francisco 49ers have a kicker problem? Also, could the Niners be losing a key executive in this front office? And could Steve Wilkes land a head coaching job during this offseason cycle as we've already seen some head coaches getting canned on this Black Monday? Before we get started, though, next up for the Niners, divisional round of the playoffs. They got the number one seed in the NFC and now coming up a week of rest for this football team. So if you're pumped up for the NFL playoffs, I want you to hit that thumbs up icon, like the video, and with that, let's start the 49ers report on this Monday. This is the San Francisco 49ers Report. I'm Chase Senior, and no matter where you are, how you're tuned in, we appreciate you for making today's show a part of your day. Coming at you from Audio Avenue in Houston, the site of the College Football National Championship. Chat Sports will be there in this great game. Two undefeated squads between Michigan and Washington tonight at Energy Stadium. Let's begin with storyline number one. And we were talking about this during our watch party yesterday after a couple of Jake Moody misses. He missed the extra point. He missed his first field goal this year under 40 yards. And we have to pose this question going into the big dance because this Niners roster, it is excellent. But do they have a hole at kicker? And does San Francisco have a kicker problem? Yesterday, Jake Moody, he was off and he had a bad game. And what was really concerning is that usually he's been money on some of these kicks inside 40 yards and he hadn't missed an extra point all throughout the year, and he missed inside 40, and he missed that extra point. And I'll tell you this, this is a terrible time as San Francisco gears up for a Super Bowl run with one of the most loaded rosters in the National Football League to have a kicker issue. And was it one bad game for Jake Moody, or is this something to be concerned about as we shift our focus toward the NFC playoffs? Kyle Shanahan, of course, asked about this after the game, and he said, quote, it's never good when you miss them, especially having two like that and the extra point. I think it was his first one inside 40 that he missed maybe all year, but he's had a hell of a year. He's done a hell of a job up to this point and just had a rough day. Here's the issue though with Jake Moody. The Niners cannot let a rookie kicker and his struggles spoil what could be a special run with a Super Bowl contender on a roster that's extremely expensive. You're paying top dollar to several players on this team, and the Super Bowl window is open. It's alive and well. And can you imagine a scenario in which the 49ers move on from a legend like Robbie Gold, who's never missed in his playoff career. They use a premium draft slot in the third round to take Jake Moody, and if a playoff game comes down to a field goal, he misses it. That would be a disaster that could have been avoided for San Francisco if they held on to Robbie Gold. And you ask yourself, what's Robbie Gold doing right now? He's at the crib. He just retired. But if the Niners gave him a call and said, Robbie, you want to come to this organization? You want to kick for us in the playoffs? I imagine he would say yes. Moody's overall numbers this year, pretty damn good. And at Michigan, hashtag go blue, he had some really clutch kicks. But he did miss some gimmies while with the Wolverines. And if he connects from 41 against the Browns after Brock Purdy led the Niners down the field, which started that three-game losing streak to start the year, and he makes that kick against the Rams, the 49ers, they're 14-3 and this year instead of 12-5. and Now, at the end of the day, it didn't really matter all that much because San Francisco still locked up the number one seed and home field advantage is going through Levi Stadium in Santa Clara. You look at Moody's numbers this year, 21 of 25 on his field goals. That's not bad at all, 84%. And Justin Tucker this year, he also missed four field goals. Last year, Robbie Gould missed four field goals. Jake Moody, a rare miss on that PAT. He was 60 of 61 this year with that being his lone miss. And you look at the kicker breakdowns here for Moody, seven of seven on kicks of 20 to 29 yards, eight of nine from 30 to 39, four of six on kicks of 40 to 49 yards, and then two of three, on kicks of 50 plus. So hopefully you can chalk this up as one bad game for Jake Moody. Obviously Kyle Shanahan with the cliche response trying to instill confidence in his rookie. But this is made worse and it's a little bit of a controversy here. And people are talking about this issue, first of all, because the Niners have the bye week. But also because Robbie Gold 
is a playoff legend, a Niner legend, who in his playoff career went 29 of 29 in the postseason with ice in his veins. You know the saying, Robbie Gold, good as gold. And again, if Jake Moody misses a clutch kick, we're going to circle back to this conversation as something that could have been averted for San Francisco. So with that, we pop up today's poll question. This will be the pinned comment on today's show. Who do you want at kicker for this Niners team? I don't think the Niners are going to go out there and sign Robbie Gold, but it is, of course, interesting to talk about type JM for Jake Moody or RG for Robbie Gold. So, so far on today's show, we got the storyline number one. Do the Niners have a kicker problem? We have two things to get to. Could San Francisco lose a key executive? And also, are they going to be looking for a defensive coordinator once again? Robert Sala to the Jets, D'Amico Ryans to the Houston Texans. By the way, congratulations to him for punching that ticket to the playoffs. And could Steve Wilkes be next? We'll get to that. But first, let's get to our sponsor, Factor Meals. Get 50% off using the code NINERSCHAT50. Get started on 2024 on the right foot so that you're ready for the new year. Factor's ready-to-eat meal delivery service takes the stress out of meal planning, and it sets you up for success here in 2024. Skip the grocery store prep work and cooking fatigue instead have everything delivered straight to your door everything is already chef crafted and chef prepared also dietitian approved all you have to do with these delicious meals and there are a bunch of different options put it in the microwave for a couple of minutes and you're ready to rock. Skip the overpriced takeout trap as well. Also, takeout meals, they're just not good for you. I know that because, you know, I really take my health seriously since my mom passed away from cancer. I'm really into health and wellness, and eating is a huge part of that factor is cheaper and way more delicious than takeout too. So get these chef crafted restaurant quality meals that are delivered straight to your door and they're ready to heat up and eat in just a couple of minutes, which means more time for you, which for us here at Chat Sports, more opportunities to interview Jim Harbaugh, Blake Corum, JJ McCarthy, to do our watch parties from the media hotel in Houston as we're covering the national championship. Factor Meals, 50% off, code NINERSCHAT50. Link is hanging out in the comments section as well as in the description of this video. So let's continue to progress here on this losing Monday for San Francisco. And let's circle back to storyline number two. Could the San Francisco 49ers lose a key executive? Interesting stuff going on across the NFL. Luckily for San Francisco, they don't have to deal with the dysfunction of having to find a new head coach and a general manager because three NFC championship games over the last four years and one of the most successful and well-run organizations in the sport. You can't say the same about the Washington Commanders, who the Niners beat a couple of weeks ago to get that number one seed. The Commanders have fired head coach Ron Rivera, and their search for a head coach gets underway immediately. They have a new ownership structure in place, led by Josh Harris, who's also the majority owner of the Philadelphia 76ers. As for former Niners executive Marty Mayhew, who right now is the executive VP of football and player personnel, according to NFL insider Josina Anderson. What up, Josie? New president of football operations will evaluate Mayhew as well as other members in that front office. The commanders here, though, this is the Niners tie, have requested permission to speak with Adam Peters for their general manager job. He is currently the assistant general manager for San Francisco. He's been with this front office since 2017, and he's been credited with helping lead this front office in developing, identifying, drafting, and developing talent. And you look at some of the key players who the Niners have selected since 2017, and Adam Peters has been a part of this front office. And you begin in that first year. George Kittle, fifth round. DJ Jones in the sixth round. Fred Warner in the third. Nick Bosa in the first round. And then in that same draft class, you also get Debo Samuel and Dre Greenlaw. I know Javon Kinlaw's been a little bit of a bust, but this year he's turned the corner. You get him and Brandon Ayuk in the first round in 2020. You get your starting right tackle in the fifth round in Colton McKivitz, who I think is more of a backup, but at least that's solid value. You also get Jawan Jennings in the seventh round, who's been just Mr. Security Blanket for this team and coming up clutch on some of those money downs. You get your starting left guard in Aaron Banks in the second round. Diamador Lenore in the fifth round of that 2021 draft as well. Talano Hufanga made an all-pro in his second year. You get him in the fifth 
Elijah Mitchell, solid backup. He's been off and injured, but you get him in the sixth round. Drake Jackson, jury's still out, but trending toward bust. Spencer Burford, starting right guard in the fourth round. Samuel Womack in the fifth in 2022. Brock Purdy, Mr. Irrelevant there. Final pick of the 2022 NFL Draft. Jair Brown looks to be a dog. Third rounder in 2023. Jake Moody in the third round. I like the future of D winners. Ronnie Bell's contributed to this team offensively, although I think special teams, he could be a little bit better. And then Jalen Graham in the seventh round. Keep an eye out in the future for D winners and Jalen Graham, especially if Steve Wilk stays, for them to potentially be impact players for this linebacking course. So Adam Peters has been a part of this organizational success especially in the NFL draft, and that's why over the last couple of years, teams have requested to interview him, and that's why the commanders are also requesting to interview him as well. Also of note here, the commanders, I woke up this morning, and in this era of X, when you're not sure if there are fake accounts that are verified, I saw this tweet from Ian Rappaport that the commanders are hiring former Warriors general manager, Bob Myers to help at their front office, as well as their head coach and potential general manager search. Now, with the Warriors, he helped be a part of that front office that helped them win four NBA championships, and he was the architect of that Golden State Warriors dynasty. He, of course, has San Francisco Bay Area connections, and when he left that Golden State front office, a lot of teams outside of the NBA – and Fortune 500 companies were reaching out to him to see if he can be a consultant to help lead their, you know, type of business approach in trying to improve things. So he's sought after and his mind is valued with building up businesses. And keep in mind, these sports franchises are businesses. Of note here, too, from Albert Breer, just for clarity, he said, Bob Myers and Rick Spielman former Vikings general manager, were brought in as advisors. They're not commander's full-time employees, so they'll help find a new head coach and football ops. Meanwhile, general manager Marty Mayhew and top executive Marty Herney, they will remain and they will be evaluated by the new football ops hire. The ties here are of note, too. And I said, I've said that word a couple of times, of note, but it's important to give you context here. Bob Myers and Adam Peters both went to... UCLA. Uh, so there's that connection between those two. And then lastly, NFL insider Chris Mortensen as we continue to talk about some potential changes within this team. And that's a part of the deal with having success at the National Football League level. Steve Wilkes, Chris Mortensen said, said, now the 49ers defensive coordinator should not be forgotten among the very worthy head coaching candidates. The Panthers should have never let him go. After a stellar interim stint last year, they hired Frank Reich. They drafted Bryce Young. Mistake to take Bryce Young over C.J. Stroud, who helped lead the Texans to the Super Bowl. And Frank Reich didn't even last the season. Now, their owner, David Tepper, very aggressive business mind, former Wall Street guy, he's kind of a clown. He threw a drink on a fan who was voicing his displeasure with the Panthers a couple of weeks ago. So that front office structure, they make decisions on a whim, and they're one of the most poorly run organizations in the game. But if they held on to Steve Wilkes, could they have been a little bit better? Because players really, really respect Steve Wilkes. And his body of work as a defensive mind in the NFL, paired with the fact that he's very well respected and can command the locker room, is what could make him a sought-after head coaching candidate, as Chris Mortensen pointed out. You look at how the Niners' defense has fared, and they were the number one overall defense under D'Amico Ryans. And then Steve Wilkes comes in. Remember we were on Super Bowl Radio Row last year. We interviewed Jay Glazer, and I asked him about the Niners' decision to hire Steve Wilkes, and he said, across the NFL, this is being talked about as one of the best coaching hires in the National Football League. That includes head coaching hires because of him being a defensive savant. And to fill in the shoes of D'Amico Ryans is not easy but Wilkes has been able to do that. And I think his move from the sideline or from the uh, booth to the sideline has really paid big dividends for the Niners because they've really gotten better since he's been on the sideline. His energy has been infectious. The communication has been better. Niners this year, number three in points per game at 17 and a half, number eight in opposing yards per game at just 303. This is a pass-happy offensive era, and for teams to not surpass 303 yards per game, that's pretty impressive. Niners are number three in opposing points per play, number seven in opposing yards per play, opposing third down conversion percentage, number 24, it's not great, 
opposing fourth down conversion percentage, also not good. So the Niners a little bit lacking on some of the money downs. Also in their red zone teams are scoring on San Francisco. The Niners ranking 16th there, but they might be giving up yards. They might be giving up third downs, but they're buckling down in the red zone. They're bending, not breaking. And the Niners, number two in total touchdowns given up per game. Again, in this offensive-centric era, teams are averaging 1.8 touchdowns per game against this Niners defense. And Steve Wilkes has his fingerprints across this entire scheme. So keep an eye out for Adam Peters to maybe get a general manager job. And we'll continue to monitor the situation with Steve Wilkes. Lastly. Yesterday during our watch party, appreciate everybody who tuned in. Our final regular season watch party will be back for the divisional round. Also, we're back for the wild card round. What did we decide to do? I think we're going to do that Packers-Cowboys game watch party here on the 49 Outers Report. So we're not taking any breaks here on the show. And thanks to everybody for supporting the program, getting us past 108,000 subscribers. Type real one if you're still with us and you're subscribed to the show. And we'll catch you tomorrow here on the Niners Report.